controlled every ward because my feeling is as a ma member of the council, there were seven of us. Sure. When we voted, we never voted for Adrian's ward or my ward. We voted for the entire city. Sure. And so I had to know what it was about, why people down in the fourth ward or the first ward, what their problems were as well as what was problems in my ward. Um, I used to stop and talk to people on this, I'd be on the, on this uh, porch, I'd stop and get out and talk to them. they tell me about potholes. Uh, one person on West 4th Street, I remember, said they uh, had been promised six weeks ago that the pothole in front was going to be filled. And because they had grandchildren, they were really concerned if a car hit the pothole and went out of control, their children, sure. grandchildren could be hurt. So I, I told them, it'll be fixed tomorrow morning. Okay. And it was fixed the following morning. All right, okay. And I have a habit of getting things done. Okay. Uh, I've, uh, I'm, a, I'm a member of the NAACP. Sure. I'm a, I'm a uh, member of the American Legion in Plainfield. Okay. I'm a vice commander there, and uh, as is Tom. Uh, and, uh, I, I believe I have I, I have five children of my own. I raised twenty one foster children sure. right here in Plainfield. And so a regular journeyman right here. I'm I'm really proud of of their accomplishments. Sure. And uh, they have all moved on to great jobs sure. and their own families and stuff. And it was because of my wife and I. I believe that this is what took place. Um, I don't know what else you would like me to say at this moment. All right, we'll come back to you. Okay, thank All you. Right. Hi, I'm Jim Pitnichny, and I want to thank uh, Reverend Jackson and Harvest Radio for uh, inviting me back, along with uh, Carol Ann and Tom. We were the three of us were here last week. Sure. And we had the chance to have our say, so I'm going to sit back a bit and listen to what uh, the, the three new individuals here, uh, Adrian, Bob, and Martin, have to say. I'm sure you're all interested in that. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, answer your question about uh, commitment. Sure. Um, uh, after the election's over and the word that sprang into my mind right away was absolutely. I'm in this for the long haul. Okay. I'm new to politics, I'll tell you that, All but right. uh, I'm having a ball so okay. far. And um, I'd like to do whatever I can to help the help playing field along. All and right. uh, so you'll be hearing more from me. Okay. Um, and that's about what I have to say for now. All so right. Martin. Come on. Thank you, Jim. Pastor, again, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to appear on Harvest uh, Radio today. Um, it's interesting that we're sitting uh, less than two blocks uh, from a location where my grandfather, uh, Fitzmerton Cox Sr., uh, was one of the founding families of St. Mark's Episcopal Church, which grew as a mission out of Grace Episcopal Church. It's interesting that uh, one of the documents I have with me today um, because my life philosophy is to whom much is given, much is required, sure. is a document that I show and I've shown that I've personally donated, my wife and I, to over 30 houses of worship in the city of Plainfield okay. uh, this year. So I come from a background with a commitment to the city of Plainfield. That commitment will not change regardless of the outcome okay. on Tuesday. Um, I have a long-term commitment to the city. As everyone knows, I've been on the Board of Ed for eight plus years. I've been in the nonprofit world. I previously worked for the Concerned Urban Clergy and Pinch, um, the nonprofit. So I've been around, I intend to be around, um, and I'm certainly great to be a proud alumnus of the Plainfield Public Schools. Okay. Um, and my children are alumnus of the Plainfield Public Schools, and my grandchildren, prayerfully, will be alumnus of the Plainfield Public Schools. So I'm proud of each and every one of those accomplishments uh, for myself and for my family. Okay. The next question I. I, I want to throw out to any of you guys that want to grab it. What is it that you guys think in your mind that you can do different and to enhance Plainfield where you may think 
Shan Robinson Briggs Live. I believe it's very important for there to be leadership in the city of Plainfield. And I believe that every candidate sitting at this table will, will agree that there hasn't been leadership coming out of City Hall. And I intend to bring leadership to City Hall to make sure that there is responsibility, accountability, and transparency, and that the services for which people are paying for are delivered. The present mayor has failed the citizens of this lovely city by ignoring the roads, by misleading people into thinking that she has increased the number of police officers on the force, where the opposite is true. She has actually, on her watch, the number of officers have gone down from 151 to 146. She has inflated the crime statistics by putting out misinformation about crime and murders declining by 300%, which is a statistical impossibility. And so these are the kinds of things that people look to a leader. And when held under the microscope, I believe that this mayor will come up short. And I intend to increase the number of police officers on the police department, address the issue of crime, bring economic development to the city so that we could expand the commercial tax base and relieve the burden of property taxes from on the shoulders of those living in Plainfield. Okay, now, if, um, if the mayor is listening and would like to call in, um, I sent the number already to your office and to call in and comment on that right there because there's no one here that's going to comment on it for her. Call in at 908-822. 9562. Okay. Um, I think immediately um, I would bring an expertise to the table as the only uh, individual who's ever worked in city government by sure. day. I spent 12 years uh, working for the city of Planco, and I would immediately fully utilize the rich expertise and knowledge of the nearly 500, 500 plus employees in the city. That's an important first step. I would develop a technology plan and implement that technology plan. We're in the year 2009 and most city services are not available online. That's criminal. You have to do those things manually. Okay. I would have an annual budget that's adopted in a timely manner. This current budget that we're in was adopted after the 26th of April and it expires at the conclusion of June. I don't believe that that is responsive to the needs of citizens and it's not responsive in managing an organization as large as the city is. Okay, and, and let me say this right here, Martin. Um, <coughs> you know, we, we, we're going through a uh, technology re revolution, if you will. Uh, we go back four years, the things that we're doing with computers today, we didn't do four years ago. I was not a Twitter <laughs> four years ago, That's nor, funny. what is it, Twitter? <laughs> Twitter, Twitter. Right. Twitter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Don't take that wrong, public. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn how to pronounce it the way you see it. Exactly. Uh, or Facebook. You know, I, I, I heard about Facebook by accident. I was at the job and, and, and a young man, you know, was talking about this Facebook thing. So I asked him about it. I said, well, what is Facebook? He told me, so I got on the computer and, you know, learned what Facebook is. Very uh, 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 good instrument. Um, Plainfield, four years ago. Like, like many towns, uh, uh, with the new technology that's coming, do you think that perhaps the move was it because it was a lack or it was just because that we're evolving as a people? Well, as a member of the uh, Planful Board of Ed, we had a shared service arrangement uh, with the city. Um, and um, if we had received timely payment for that shared service arrangement. I believe we'd still be in that arrangement. That arrangement was uh, less than half of what was paid to an outside consultant. Okay. Um, we have the infrastructure, we have the personnel, um, and I believe that we could assist the city immediately in improving the use of technology uh, throughout city government. Let me ask you this right here, Martin, stay with you for a minute. This technology move that everyone is talking about, 
which is good today. I mean, I got rid of old cameras, you know, that you got the old film or whatever, just so easy to have that camera that you can just delete the film or see 2,000 of them, you know. Um, is this is this the talk that's in city council? You know, at the city council meetings, do they move this right here? Is it talking about these things? Uh, there have been a few items on the agenda in regards okay. to the technology, um, but it's past due time to get beyond the talking stage and to implement a program where the citizens can access all governmental, all city departments, okay. access forms, access the tax database. Those things should be available at the touch of a button to all the residents of Plainfield. Okay, in the Plainfields, the South Plainfield, North Plainfield, uh, are they equipped that way at this point? Not that we are bouncing off, just want to throw that out there. I can't speak to that, but parents can, through the Board of Ed, parents can access their children's grades. Okay. They can register for classes. There's a lot of things that technology gives you the ability to do and creates greater efficiency through its uses. The reason why I keep asking you, because I know um, in less than a year, one of you guys are going to be mayor. I mean in that even with Sharon Robinson Brick, she may be mayor 2010. Uh, I don't want to sit here at the town talk and put all that pressure just on the mayor, and it's not, you know, this is not a, just a job for the mayor. I think it's a job for the whole community. So that's why I, I uh, asked you that question. So is there anything you want to say, Carol, at this moment? Well, I think the question you asked was, what do we think we bring to the table that's different than the other yeah. candidates? And uh, with respect to me, I, I only manage my own uh, loss of practice here in Plainfield. Okay. I specialize in elder law and disability. I was a vice president at American Broadcasting Company where I uh, supervised the budget of $70 million. So I know how to manage people. I know how to manage money. Okay. But most importantly, I think what is very important here in Plainfield is that we need to really develop true community development in terms of rateables. We don't have rateables. We have existing right now 341 homes on the market. We don't need them to do any more or encourage any more development of residential real estate. That is not what we need. We need rateables, and we need to do it in a way that makes sense. I don't know if you're aware of the National League of Cities, no, but it's a resource that you can go to. Uh, they give you ideas and give you examples of how um, communities in conjunction with other communities work together to develop a real resource, to develop real rateables in our community. We have wonderful stock along East Front, well, what, it gets West Front Street, which goes into Dinellan. It's been space that has not been utilized for a number of years. For those of you who've lived in Plainfield as long as I have, actually, because I grew up here and went to public okay. school here, uh, it was the old Mack Motors buildings. I've and, heard about it. And if we could work with Dunellen, work with Greenbrook, which is things that have been done in other communities that we should be trying to do here to really develop a business that will come here, invest in our community, uh, we share revenues and whatever the tax abatements are with those other communities, and we make sure that we have job opportunities. We need to do things in our community that really develops jobs for people in Plainfield and the Plainfield area so that we can all prosper and grow. And if we have a good business plan, if a good business plan, we go forward, we find businesses that will work with us to develop okay. that area. We have the other communities working with us, pulling with us to do, do that kind of development. Sure. Then what happens is you get that one sort of anchor business. And from that, other businesses grow. Okay. People will gravitate to that area to develop their business. All right, we're gonna go to, go to the line now. I believe I have uh, Mayor Briggs on the line. He said there is a phone call. Okay, that, that is the phone call. Yes, who's online? Yes, go ahead, Reverend Branch. How you doing? And the police, I've been asked to come. 
comment on behalf of the police officers and just to let you know that they remember what you said. And they're not willing, they're not looking forward to working with you. Would you like to comment? Thank you, Reverend Branch. Again, you have decided to tarnish me and to smear me. When you were last here, you accused me of not going down to Trenton on the 10 buses that went down to Trenton to rally in support of Muhlenberg. And you say that you were on one of the buses, so you knew that I wasn't there. That was your reasoning. And I pointed you to News 12, where I was captured on tape speaking at that event. Now you have been sent to do the bidding of others. What I can say to you, Reverend Branch, and to the people of Plainfield, is that back in 2004, when the city was experiencing some severe economic stress, that the council and the mayor slashed the budgets of almost all of the departments in the city. The police department was among those departments. We attempted, we did everything that we could to have the police department give up a duplicate prescription plan that was costing the city $350,000 that wasn't being used by any of those officers. And Instead of doing that, the union opted to have eight of their officers laid off by the former administration. And so, the number of police officers went down to 151 as a result of eight officers. And these are facts, Mr. Brand, being laid off. But we have to move forward. And it is my plan to address the very troubling problem with crime that we have in our community and I have laid out a vision for the city. I have laid out a plan for the, the police department where I will bring the complement up to 160. I've said how I will pay for that. That is by attrition, by the savings from the retirements of the highly paid senior officers that will be leaving the force this year and by the stimulus package made available to all cities and states by the signing of that into law by our President Barack Obama. I will open my hand and reach out to every department within the city, to the leadership of the Plainfield Police Department, and though I know that you have been sent to do the bidding of others, I am speaking to the people of Plainfield to let them know that I will provide the leadership that is needed, and Plainfield will move forward under my leadership. Well, the question going back Mr. to that to get an opportunity to answer that about, you know, um, you know, what will you bring differently than what the current mayor offers on there? Uh, the, the one, th there are a number of things that I would definitely uh, bring to the table that's a little bit different. As I've always said, I would focus on the needs of the individuals in Plainfield. Sure. And, and the biggest issues that people are talking about are taxes. Now, I've been here since 1992, and I've never seen a city council budget yet adopted that reduced taxes really reduce taxes, not defer them. But, but can we really reduce taxes well, without, without, without industry, without big industry well, coming well, out? Absolutely, because I mentioned before that one of the things we need is a forensic audit in here. We can cap the salaries that exist for appointed persons so that they're not constantly increasing year after year. There are ways of finding uh, monies to go ahead and do that. Okay. And, and if that's what the citizens need, then we need to set priorities in terms of what we need to get done here. And when we all decide what's important, then we'll balance that between what we need and what we actually want to do in terms of reducing taxes around here. So that's a big need. The other thing is getting something for your services. So it's sort of the opposite of work in hand with it as well. People want to see something for it. They've been saying that for years. They want to see something returned for their money that they're paying right now. Um, it's all right that they pay taxes as high as some other communities or higher, but they want to know that they're getting back something for that. And that complaint I've heard since 1992, since I moved here. I was the first person to raise that when I got my tax bill. Okay. And, and I don't think that's really been addressed. The other thing, which is an ethical thing, is just being honest with people. You know, they need to know that government is there and that they'll actually listen to them and react to them and do it in a positive way. I don't think that we've had city councils and some mayors 
that have been 100% honest and forthright with people in terms of even answering simple questions of what happened to this money? Why aren't we getting this? It's always been a deferred issue, uh, especially at council for the many times that I've gone there. And I think that at least people are entitled to get an honest answer when they ask a simple question. Um, Another thing that I bring, if you look at the, the, my background in terms of what I've offered, and okay. I, I don't want to insult anybody, but I'm probably the only IT person sitting around this table. Uh, that means information technology. I'm the geek. You know, so when you talk about, you know, what we is know possible. We you know, Well, so, I mean, you know, with, some people don't. So um, if you're, um, you know, if you're looking to address that issue, yeah, and a lot of it doesn't even cost any money right now. Most, most cities have websites up that post information. But, but you don't have, you know, real documents. You go, to the, you go into the tax office, a lot of that is in computerized. When I got married... So, so we, have to, we have to update. We, we definitely we do. And we can update. do that. We can give people, um, you know, internships so they can do that. You can hire uh, folks um, from schools to do that so they get some experience. Sure, terms of doing sure. And a lot of that can also be done, you know, without any cost by using the resources that we have right here. But it's something that can be done. It can be done very simple, you know, with, with not a lot of cost at it. It's just got to, you just got to make up your mind and do it. Can I just say one thing? I think uh, it's correct that IT is important, but I think what we're missing is management. We need to have an office that is managed, and we don't have competent management right now. All due respect to uh, Mayor Briggs, uh, we don't have the manager. Okay. Okay. And I wish she would call in and she could defend herself. Okay. Go ahead. Um, to answer your question. One of the problems in Plainfield are the high taxes. And I have a plan, and it's ready to go, to reduce property taxes. Okay. I, it's not a game. It's not something, as some members here had called us liars, that we were going to promise to do things. I have it ready to go. I'm not at liberty until after June 2nd to share, to share the amount. Okay, because all of a sudden everybody will be giving a discount or a reduction in taxes. Um, we also have to take care of the youth of this city. Yes. They, I have, I have five children on my own, and I, and I have twenty-one foster children, and they all have grown up to be good citizens. The thing is, we got children, we got children and young adults on our streets. We have nothing to do. Sure. So jobs are very important. Instead of paying somebody, and no disrespect to public works, but instead of paying somebody in public works to cut grass at, tw at large salaries or pay yellow lines, we can give that job to the children and youth so that they can have money in their pocket. Sure. And have but without respect. industry, but you know, no, and, and, I, and I respect what you say, but without industry, how can we really, really uh, provide jobs that's going to be sustainable for our young? I often talked about that right there on, the, on this show here. It's just it's that we are a community, a suburb city community, that we don't seem to have the business revenue to, like some of the bigger towns that can cover us. You know, we are basically a community that's, uh, uh, I would say, covered by those that live in the community. So there's a lot of pensioning that we have to do. I uh, commend and, and salute uh, Martin Cox here because his son went to college and got a degree. He's going, going, to, going to get another degree. He's going to be a teacher, a doctor, whatever it's going to be. And that really is the kind of people.